In this lesson, we're going to focus on reactions associated with carboxylic acid derivatives. So the first thing you need to know is that an acid chloride is more reactive than an acid anhydride. And the acid anhydride is more reactive than an ester. The ester and a carboxylic acid, they have about the same reactivity. Now, a carboxylic acid is more reactive than an amide. And an amide is more reactive than the deprotonated form of a carboxylic acid. So it's more reactive than the carboxylate ion. Now, let's focus on reactions that produce carboxylic acids. So we're going to start with an acid chloride. If we add water to a carboxylic acid derivative, it's going to make a carboxylic acid. The leaving group Cl will pair up with a hydrogen atom from water, giving us HCl as a byproduct. And then we need to pair up these two parts, and that's going to give us the carboxylic acid. So that's a quick way to determine what the products will be in this reaction. Now, the acid chloride is more reactive than the carboxylic acid. And so whenever you have the situation, whenever you have a reaction with a more reactive species on the left, but a less reactive species on the right, the position of equilibrium will always favor the side with the species that is less reactive. So the reaction is going to go in the direction towards the less reactive species. In this case, we have a product favored reaction. Let me give you another example. Now let's take another acid derivative, in this case the acid and hydride, and let's react it with water. So we're going to pair up the leaving group with the hydrogen, and so let's make it an unsymmetrical anhydride. So these two will get together, and we're going to get propanoic acid, and then if we pair up these two, we're going to get another carboxylic acid. And so whenever you mix an acid and hydride with water, you get two carboxylic acids. Now, the acid and hydride is more reactive than the carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid is less reactive. And so, like the other reaction, this is a product favored reaction. Another way in which you can make a carboxylic acid is by reacting an ester with water. And so this is going to be the side product. So if you add H with OCH3, you get HOCH3. Or if you want to, you can write it this way. CH3OH. So that's an alcohol. And then combining these two, that's going to give us the carboxylic acid. So anytime you add water to one of the carboxylic acid derivatives, you're going to get a carboxylic acid, assuming that the derivative is not less reactive than the water. Now, the ester and the carboxylic acid, they have the same reactivity. They're equally reactive. And so, therefore, this reaction is in equilibrium. It's reversible. So you can go to the right or you can go to the left. And to speed up this reaction, you need a catalyst, typically an acid catalyst. Now, because this reaction is in equilibrium, you can cause it to go one way by adjusting the concentration of the species in this reaction. For example, if you increase the concentration of water, you can drive the reaction towards the right. Or if you increase the concentration of the alcohol, you can drive the reaction towards the left. So anytime you increase the concentration of a reactant, you can drive it to the right. Or if you increase the concentration of a product, you can drive the reaction to the left based on Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium. Now let's go over the mechanism for the first reaction between an acid chloride and water. 
So feel free to pause the video and try this mechanism if you want to. The first step is that water is going to attack the carbonyl group. The carbonyl carbon has a partial positive charge and the oxygen of water has a partial negative charge. So the oxygen atom is attracted to the carbon atom of the acid chloride. And so the pi bond is going to break, giving us a tetrahedral intermediate that looks like this. Now, in the next step, we need to use a weak base to remove a hydrogen. And so we could use another water molecule to do that for us. By the way, this first step and the second step is reversible. Now, this tetrahedral intermediate is unstable, and so it's going to collapse. Now, what we need to determine is which group will leave. Is it going to be the chlorine group or the hydroxyl group? Hydroxide is a stronger base than chloride, so it's a poor leaving group. Therefore, Cl is going to leave. So this lone pair will reform the pi bond, expelling the best leaving group in this tetrahedral intermediate. And so that's how we can go from an acid chloride to a carboxylic acid. Now let's focus on reactions that produce acid and hydrides. A simple way to do this is to react two carboxylic acid molecules together. If you take out water and you combine the left side and the right side, it's going to give you the acid and hydride. And a side product is water. Now, acid and hydrides are more reactive than carboxylic acids, which are uh, less reactive. As a result, this is not a product favored reaction. The reactants are energetically favored. Now, in order to drive the reaction to the right, we need to add heat. Now here's what's going to happen. Once you add heat, the water that exists as a product, when heated, it can turn into steam and it could leave the solution. And so as water leaves the solution as steam, the concentration of water in a solution decreases. And based on Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium, if you decrease the concentration of a product, what's going to happen? We know the reaction will shift to the right. And so you need to add heat or a dehydrating reagent to basically drive this reaction forward. P2O5 is an example of a dehydrating reagent that you could use in this case. Or you could just use heat. So that's one way in which you can make an acid and hydride. Here is an example problem. So here we have a molecule with two carboxylic acid functional groups facing each other. What's going to happen if we add heat to it? Go ahead and predict the major product of this reaction. So we know what's going to happen. Water is going to be removed. And so we're going to get a cyclic anhydride and this anhydride is known as phthalic anhydride and we'll get water as a side product. The reactant is known as phthalic acid. And so anytime you have two carboxylic acid functional groups reacting with each other, and if you use heat or a dehydrating agent, an anhydride will form. Now, another way in which we can make an anhydride is by reacting an acid chloride with a carboxylic acid. So in this case, HCl is going to be the byproduct. Now this reaction is favorable because at room temperature, HCl is a gas, and so it's going to leave the solution. So 
the concentration of a product is going down. Therefore, this will drive the reaction towards the right. So now all we need to do is combine these two, and our main product will be ethanoic and hydride. So that's another way in which you can make an anhydride, is by reacting those two together.